This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So let's look at the statement of cash flows. A lot of this you will find is revision. So please feel free, if you so wish, to go through work it under your own steam. And then if you get stuck on anything, then drop back into the videos. It's entirely up to you how you go through and study. Don't let me tell you what to do. Okay, but if you are comfortable with cash flow from your certificate level, then great. Okay, uh, if not, let's go. Okay, uh, so what you've got there on that first page in the chapter is looking at a pro forma statement of cash flows. You are not going to have to produce a full statement of cash flows within the exam. But what you could be expected to do is firstly calculate any of the figures that appear up in there. OK, so any of those X's. Uh, but what you would also be expected to do as well is to understand what goes within each heading. OK, uh, so maybe a non-computational aspect. So remember, uh, the statement of cash flows is split. Some people say three. I say four. OK, uh, because the three relate to your operating activities, so your day-to-day -day activities. Uh, you've then got, is it your cash flows from your investing? And as well as your investing, oh, so that's buying and selling non-current assets. You also have your financing, so the cash that's raised uh, from issuing shares, from issuing debt and repaying debt. Okay, so that's the three. The, the fourth one I sort of speak about in terms of areas is the one at the bottom, isn't it? Whereby you look at the movement in your cash and your cash equivalents. OK, uh, just a quick recap before we go through and look at things in any great detail. Uh, remember, your statement of cash flows is the for the year ended. OK, uh, it's not as at a point in time like the SFP is telling you about the resources that you have used. Uh, during a 12 month period, isn't it? Uh, the most common way that we see of presenting your statements of cash flows is to go through that, isn't it? And use what we refer to is it as the indirect method. So the indirect method is used to work out your cash generated from your operations. Okay, so from your day to day activities, you start with your profit before tax in your statement of profit or loss uh, and then you adjust don't you uh, so you go through there don't we and take pbt we adjust for any non-cash items we adjust so that we get back to operating profit and then you adjust for any movement in inventory receivables and payables we will talk about that in more detail afterwards uh, you've then got your interest paid and cash paid again remember they are cash payments aren't they so they are outflows it's not necessarily what the expense figure is within profit or loss you need to adjust that based upon accruals opening and closing to work out the cash figure uh, again if you see positive numbers that's an inflow if you see negative numbers that's an outflow isn't it uh, again you then move on to your investing activities so again make sure you know what goes in your investing activities it's anything to do isn't it to do with the buying and selling isn't it of non-current assets so here we primarily refer to property plants and equipment but it could be intangibles investment property you name it okay financial instruments so investments that you have made in shares uh, but again what you've got there the proceeds from the sale is an inflow the purchase is an outflow and then you may have invested in shares you may have invested uh, in debt so therefore you get some interest or dividends so there i've just put in dividends received you could also have interest received as well okay uh financing remember that's everything to do isn't it with is it your debt or your equity so what goes in there is if you've issued shares you've got a nice big cash inflow uh if you've issued debts so you've taken out a loan, that's a cash inflow, whereby if you've repaid it, it is a cash outflow. Again, just going back to the shares. Now, if there was a bonus issue of shares, there is no cash impact, is there? Likewise, on the investing activities, if there is a revaluation of PPE, that there's no cash impact there. Okay. Uh, likewise, also within financing activities could be your dividend paid. Okay. 
Uh, so just recap that there to make sure you know what goes within which heading. I think that's vitally important if it comes to a non-computational question. It could say which of the following select all appear within your financing activities. And it could give you a selection from financing, but also investing and operating activities lines as well. And you need to determine which is correct. OK, right at the bottom, it talks about your, your cash and cash equivalents. So I think the best way to go through and look at that is to look at it over the page, isn't it? So if we're going through there and looking at your cash and cash equivalents, uh, cash is cash on hand or cash in hand and, and demand deposit. So cash at the bank, isn't it? The key one that you've got there, isn't it, as always, is your, your cash equivalents. Uh, they are short term, highly liquid investments. OK, they're readily convertible into cash, have a minimum amount of risk. So you're normally going through there and thinking about your government bonds. Government bonds are in the UK, we refer to them as government gilts. OK, but internationally, government bonds. Even though it's an investment, it is treated as cash because it is so liquid that it is essentially cash. OK, so what have we got? Uh, let's look at the example. Is it example number one just there at the bottom? Uh, it says calculate the movements in cash and cash equivalents. OK, uh, so what you've got, uh, we're going from is it X5? Is it to X or sorry, X4 to X5? So I have my brought forward on the right, carry forward on the left. Uh, and you can see here that you have a government bond, don't we? And a government bond is a short term, highly liquid investment. So is a cash equivalent, isn't it? So what we have there is that we can see that my carry forward is that there is 1,600. Just be careful because when you look at your cash on demand, the cash on demand in the in the previous year is an overdraft, isn't it? So that is negative cash. So you take the 1,000 and you deduct the 150. And in doing so there, does that give me 850? OK, so we had 850 of cash and cash equivalents last year. Remember, deduct the overdraft to get your cash figure. Uh, and then in the current year, X5, you have, is it 1600? OK, uh, so what would appear that if we tie that into what we have here uh, within the, the pro forma? The opening cash is there, was it as 850? The closing cash was 1600, wasn't it? So the change in cash, essentially there is an increase in your cash balance. Is that there as 750? Effectively, we're just making that a balancing figure. We're not totaling anything up from operating, investing or financing activities. If we were, hopefully we would total those three balances up to give us the 750. But we can work out the change by just looking at the opening cash and the closing cash as well. Don't forget to incorporate cash equivalents and don't forget to incorporate any overdraft as a negative cash balance.